Hello. Yeah. I'm here for the game. Blind date. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again. Blind date rolling on. Episode 25. We're at the uh, quarter century mark. These things are absolutely cruising. Guests have been showing up and hitting home runs left and right. Uh, man, we're making Nickelodeon. These interviews have been making 60 minutes look like Nickelodeon NFL halftime shows. Uh, today's show actually is supported. Let's get to a little support real quick. What did I have for today's supporter? Oh, God. Sorry, guys. The supporter left, so I had to fill in the gaps with today's program is supported by fast-forwarding through commercials on recorded devices, proven to raise dopamine levels and prevent crime. That's the caffeine, guys. Ignore that one. That's just me um, losing my mind regularly, so you can go ahead and skip on past that. Uh, now, let's get rolling. Today's guest, you may know him as the architect of Money Makers and Heartbreakers for the Undroppables. I know him as the man who tweets out the lyrics to Shaggy songs, so please... Make some guests for today's big blind date man, Mr. Mike Reedy. Mike, what up, dude? Not much, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm happy that you noticed the things I tweet out about song lyrics, so that's good. That's it's where my brain good. always goes first. Like I work, I see quotes um, in the wild, like um, you know, like the guy from A Beautiful Mind sees like equations and stuff. That's just how my brain works. Well, well, being an older guy here with all this white hair I have, right, when I shoot out some hip-hop lyrics from, like, the 90s sometimes, <laughs> yeah. the guys on the Undroppables are like, wait, what? Him? Yeah, <laughs> this is my music. Oh, man, you are flex on them. It's kind of like letting them know that you were there when it started. So let's everybody get in line. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's pretty funny sometimes. Was that um, just a song that came on the radio that day and you were just like, let's go? Uh, I think it popped in my head. I was walking around singing it, and then I uh, threw it out there. I'm, it's on my phone, so I might have listened to it on a walk or something and not realized I – and it just stuck there. So, yeah. Well, that one in particular was a banger. We're talking about Angel, uh, by the way, just so people know which one we're talking about. Um, and it was it was divine. How um, – I got to ask you, how you doing? We're in June – OTAs are rolling, getting ready to go into training camp. Fantasy is kind of, you know, getting its wheel spun. Uh, how are things on your end? Good, good, right? So I just got into um, Scott Fish Bowl 13 a couple of weeks ago. I think I actually was in the first wave, so I was Excellent. excited about that. Um, mm -hmm. But I like that because that means draft season's coming. I love drafting. Um, yes. You know, we'll, we'll talk about that, I'm sure, right? So I oh, yeah. so love drafting, and I love drafting for redraft, and I like playing DFS. And uh, some of the things, sometimes I write about this, talk about it on a podcast. I'm on call mm -hmm. cheat as well. Uh, it's it's uh, there used to be an app um, just for just called Draft. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So you can do that on FanDuel. I like Draft mm -hmm. as much. I end up doing that throughout the season weekly too. Like it's just fun stuff. Right. Yeah. Draft. I feel like they really, I remember that being the first time I was thinking about alternative ways to play the game or at least non-traditional ways. Um, that way, yeah, that was, that, that, those were the good days. <laughs> the good days. It's a fun <laughs> way to make money by the way in DFS because it's not like everybody can have the same team or the same guys, Yeah, know, but it's, it's, it's a fun little game. I like that. It's, it's the ultimate um, test of how much you can take the temperature of what's about to happen um, week to week too. I mean, there, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's quite the barometer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we'll, uh, we'll get rocking and rolling here. I'm going to hit you with the icebreaker questions. We'll just get five out of the way real quick, just to get used to how this format's going to go. So I'll start with first one still or sparkling water at a restaurant. Ooh, still, but I, nice. I'm actually drinking sparkling right now. That's funny. I, is that a spin drift? Let's go. Yeah, spin drift, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I had the choice between lemon and uh, lime, and I chose lemon. I almost, that would have been, that would have been, uh, that would, for marketing purposes, that would have been ideal, but it's okay. We'll get there. Um, number two, uh, would you rather go to the zoo or the water park? Ooh. Um, I would have to say the water park now. Mm. When my kids were little, I would have chosen the zoo. They mm -hmm. probably would have been mad and chosen the water park but they like <laughs> that's pretty good i like that you had to think about it though um kornheiser or wilbon what for uh, pardon the interruption 
uh, Kornheiser or Wilbon from ESPN? Oh God, I hate that show. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll take Kornheiser. Okay, you know, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll pull an audible here. Uh, Stephen A. Smith or Skip Bayless? Oh God, Stephen A. Every time the Skip is another nice. guy I can't stand. Yeah, uh, Skip. Skip's um, he hit the peak and now he's starting to be on the downside. God bless him. Um, he can't keep a co-host. <laughs> no, no, man. He's that's you, pretty if, bad. Yeah, they um I don't know. I guess he's just one of those guys, man. Impossible to work with, unfortunately. Doesn't make for long lasting relationships. No. Uh number number four in this segment. Are you photogenic? Well, you're looking at me right now on camera, so I would say the answer is no. Absolutely. Oh no. Not. <laughs> no, 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 no. I disagree. I disagree. I think you're coming through and you're coming through in beautiful 4K right now. Uh, that'll be the thumbnail for the show that we'll lead with. Oh, I assure boy. you. Yeah, yeah, that'll drive people away, man. <laughs> and uh, last one here. What's your go to cocktail to make? Oh, to make? All right, mm-hmm. so I was a bartender, so I have a lot. Oh, fantastic. Right? Nice. Now, let's do a top three just for, um, just for right, prosperity. So, so I make one that I used to make at this nightclub I worked at called Moist Panties. Yes. yes. <laughs> the, name, the name would alone drive people to buy it. Everyone's right? favorite words combined. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you think women say they hate it, but when they're out mm. drinking with all their friends at a nightclub and a bachelor party or something, this is sure. would become a go-to drink. Uh, it tastes like fruit punch. Mm-hmm. So fruit? The okay, is, okay, it, okay, I can work with that. Yeah, but it's like almost all alcohol, so, the, so <laughs> it's painful. Sure. Um, so you know, I I once had neighbors' wives getting wasted in my backyard before a cookout and things. Mm-hmm. People I never <laughs> thought what I'd ever see drunk, and I would be saying things like, "What are you drinking? I'm drinking out of the punch bowl." Oh, good God! Please stop. <laughs> The oh, punch man. bowl is all alcohol. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Um, that is why the punch ball exists, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And if I want to be super easy, I'll have a rum and coke. There's different kinds mm-hmm. of rum I like. Um, sure. I also drink scotch, so there's, there's excellent lots of scotch that I'll drink. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it sounds like I'm a big drinker, by the way. I'm talking here. I don't drink all mm-hmm. that often. Like I'll have a drink, maybe. Sometimes I'll have a couple of drinks if I'm out socially. But, yeah. uh, like... If I open up my liquor cabinet, I have a bunch of bottles, and they're all missing like two glasses of whatever's <laughs> in them. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's you know, if worse comes to worse, you know you're stocked up. Yeah, I'm stocked up for company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm right there with you. Um, having intimate knowledge of what goes into a nice cocktail doesn't imply that six or seven are going into your body at night. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. All good there. Yeah. What's your uh, favorite? We're, I know you're my little, favorite. But I, I want to know. <laughs> I, you know, I go through these phases like crazy right now. I'm going through a big Negroni phase. Um, I was anti gin forever. And this is like my intro into the gin world. Um, and then before that, it was any kind of spritz, Aperol spritz, Campari spritz, Limoncello spritz. And then oh, you know, I make Limoncello. Oh, fantastic. Send me yes. Oh, I got you covered. I got you covered. And that address is to round out that list. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. So, um, Pretty much anything with bourbon is going to be right up my alley. Oh, yes. Yes, it should be. Yeah. We are in the yes. halls. Yeah. <laughs> That's God. God's chosen liquor. That's absolutely the case. And we're staying clear. Where, where are you right now? Are you up in New England, I think? Uh, I'm in New England, yeah. Yeah. So you guys aren't being affected. Right by, you're not being – oh, so you're definitely not affected by all the craziness that's going on right now with the uh, dust storms and whatnot, right? I'm not. Um, mm-hmm. I know people in Pennsylvania and New York that are. Yeah. yeah. And, like the pictures I'm seeing of New York City, it's orange there. Which it's unbelievable. Is scary. Like it's yeah. not anywhere near Canada. No, <laughs> it's a, it's like a it's apocalyptic almost. Yeah. Oh goodness. Well, we'll keep them in our thoughts as we cruise through this bad boy. So we'll get rocking and rolling. That was a beautiful warm up. So I'll start with the first question on every blind date that I like to ask, which is. What's your deal? How did you become the Mike Reedy that's sitting before me today? Fantasy football wise? Sure. Uh, we'll go fantasy football wise. So mm. I actually joined Twitter in like 2014. Um, mm. And I was interacting. I joined it to be part of the fantasy football community. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to learn more. I wanted to make sure I could beat my league mates even worse than I typically beat them. Right. Nice. That was the original plan. Put your foot on their throats. Yeah, yeah that was the original plan. <laughs> um, I was, I, I would say it was pretty good at fantasy then, right? I was good. Mm-hmm. I, I won league championships, but 
it, this is the kind of game that's always changing. And yeah. I think you, you're always learning stuff. Um, I started interacting with some people uh, back then. And somebody asked me to write for a website way back then, which is long gone. Mm-hmm. So I did for one season. And then I was like, I don't have time for this. My kids are little, right? Like, I don't have time for <laughs> it. Um, a few years ago, I came back and I got involved in the community again a little bit more. And uh, the Undroppables were being formed. And yeah. uh, Nick and, and at the time term, Nick's Chalk 101, by the way, mm. um, asked me if I'd write. They had no writers. They had no one. And that was because I had a Money Makers and Heartbreakers thread I put out there every week. And mm. evidently people people would prefer if I put the thread back out there, right? But I just started. Hey! Trying, started <laughs> not having time to do that. I'll, I'll, yeah. maybe I'll try to get back to that this That's season. how it goes, though. That's how right? it goes. Yeah. And uh, so I wrote the article, and then they were like, can you do this every week? And the next thing I know, I'm writing the Untangling the Wire article as well for the Waiver Wire, which is a mm. really good article. Um, actually, probably better than Moneymakers and Heartbreakers. I shouldn't say that. Mm. That's what I'm known for. Um, but... So I was the first person writing on the site other than Nick himself. Yeah. Um, and I've been there since, and now I own a piece of it. So oh, excellent. You know, Very not nice. bad. Uh, I love the guys at the Undroppables. I'm by mm-hmm. far the oldest one, but that's okay as well. Bunch of really good guys. But that's uh, where the shaggy ladies. lyrics come into play. Yeah, that's where the shaggy <laughs> lyrics come And ladies, by the way. We have of course. I'm, oh yeah, but, but, but you guys have, have built a, quite the you guys have built quite the community over there. It's very impressive. Yeah, we we have a pretty big team, um, mm-hmm. and and doing some really good stuff. Uh, there's a lot of good information coming out by our our uh, I guess he's the director of analytics, Joshua, in regards mm-hmm. to best ball right now because sure. it's best ball season, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and we're in full swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. It, I guess you could say it was an accident, but. I don't know. It works. I like it. I'm having fun. That, that, uh, that seems to be how it goes. We all want to get that extra edge and we all open ourselves up to this wonderful wide ranging community and it sucks us in more than anything else. I think. Yeah. Well, that, that is definitely what happened. Um, mm. I got sucked in by, um, I don't know if you know the fantasy moose, Doug. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Doug is who sucked me in and mm-hmm. you should try doing this. Okay. Let's see what we get. That's good. That's really good. I was like, well, thanks. And the next thing I know, here I am. Right. Nice. So I, I, I can blame it all on Doug. Uh, Doug. No, you know what? That he, you know what? Doug's tough. He can handle it. Um, Doug's doing a lot of good stuff too. So Great that's uh, a lot of positive or a lot of, you know, just putting the right priorities in place. I'm happy to see a lot of that. Well, that's great. I mean, that's 2014. Man, there was just not a lot. It was mainly the big publications back then, you know, your ESPN, your Yahoo's. That that's all it was, um, and it's comical because like I met Eric Moody back then, uh, mm. and now he's on ESPN. And there you um, go. So I've been interacting with you for a long time, <laughs> and uh, there's a few other really big names right now. When I remember when they had like two thousand or a thousand followers, and mm-hmm. Scott Barrett another sure. one that you know forever yeah you know, interacting with scott they're good they're both really good so very you know, good yeah good. a lot a lot of people that just you know like yourself have just been putting the work in and not lost focus and just you know it it, it all stems from the passion first and as long as that doesn't burn out you're always going to be involved in some manner yeah yeah well and if not i'm not looking to do this for a career but if you're someone sure. like eric who was I mean, Eric's story of how we made it to ESPN is is a long, I mean, hmm. almost 10 year journey. Wow. Uh, and now he's on ESPN. So it's pretty, I think it's pretty inspiring if you're somebody who wants to do this for a living to look at how hard that guy worked to get where he is and, and know hmm. that you can do it too if you really want and, and put him that kind of effort. He worked real hard. Yeah, absolutely. No, he's plugged away. And you know what I love, you know, from him, to a lot of other people who are at his status or above or even a little below, I mean, the accessibility that they give everybody and the one-on-one interactions and the taking their time out of their day to, you know, just, you know, continue to be a part of this. It's because they know, they know how much that means to people and they know how important it is, not just for what they do, but for what we all do. Yeah, it's great. It's, 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 uh, I advise friends to come and join the community if they want to get better at fantasy and then they 
catch all the hot take people right away. <laughs> yeah, like, ah, oh. I hate this. And it's like, yeah. oh, dude, we all hate that. Like, don't worry. Yeah. People vanish. Don't worry about them. Yeah. The, 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 it, no, nobody sticks out like a, a sore thumb more than those people. Um, and we've all been pretty good at identifying and putting a flag on what's going on over there. Yeah. God bless them though. That's, you know, you're right though. That is most people's initial introduction. I hadn't really thought about how, we all have that like my that like checkpoint on the road where we all are like wait what is this about yeah uh um <laughs> a really i'm really friendly with detroit beastie right now uh, chris mm -hmm. christopher robin chris yeah chris said to me my like i don't know three months into writing this is a labor of love for you and i said yes and he said all right then if you really like it stick with it You'll notice most of these people that you're interacting with won't be writing or doing fantasy content in a year or two. They'll all vanish. Mm. And I have pretty much seen that. Yeah. The vast majority last a year or so, and they just. That's absolutely away. that's absolutely the case um, for a lot of different reasons. I noticed when I came into this world, you know, I kind of like I didn't really know too many people other than the big names. Obviously, it's how it works for everybody. And I would type in fantasy football into Twitter and just kind of like peruse through the profiles and i would notice like once you got past like maybe the top 100 or 150 the next like four to 500 hadn't been active in years it was absolutely shocking like not a post and i don't know but that's exactly what you're talking about it they kind of they lose their steam and they fall apart because they're for for reasons most of them do too much and burn themselves out is what really yeah. happens trying to make it and it's like oh dude just <laughs> have fun slow down you can't yeah, kill yeah. yourself enjoy the ride yeah yeah so, absolutely well that's, that's great life, man, right that, that's how we do it and that is your deal and i'm into it okay. uh so let's get to today's deal today was a big day let's talk scott fishbowl 13 scoring what are your initial impressions of this madness so I, I like the changes, to be honest. I, I think mm -hmm. most people do. He removed the punishment for interceptions. Mm -hmm. um, if you watch his video, he said he was removing all the negative and sticking with the positive, which means yeah. every week's probably going to be a high scoring week. Yeah. So drafting is going to be, you know, um, something we really need to pay attention to. Uh, mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey is probably a top three pick now with these scoring changes for Easily. tight end. Uh, just like I feel every year in his, his, um, in the Scott Fishbowl, this is my third year playing by the way, but I Excellent. think you want to go quarterback early, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I would go Kelsey if I'm top three, but probably quarterback early. Sure. Um, last year I had a great QB, um, combo. I had, um, Tua and Mahomes, and then I had nice. like nobody's for my third quarterback. And when Tua mm -hmm. got hurt, I, I was playing kickers, mm -hmm. but I still won my division <laughs> because of the quarterbacks. Um, they, nice. they carried me through weeks and weeks. Sure. And weeks. So I, I would look at it as, you know, if you don't get Kelsey, you want to go tight ends late and a bunch of them probably hoping one yeah. works out. You want to be quarterback early. And then, I mean, this looks really good for running backs to the scoring changes, right? There's extremely, uh, they're fine. They're yeah. they're ra they're raising the baseline for what feels like almost every position. Um, cool. The gloves are yeah. off. I like what it did. I, he he mentioned in his video trying to even the playing field. Uh, quarterbacks and t tight ends still, I think, look um, preferable. Pre premium, yeah. Right. That means Kelsey is a huge step up. Um, mm -hmm. Quarterbacks up, but the running back slash. Uh, wide receiver scoring really mm -hmm. levels the playing field there. So I don't, yeah. you know, lots of people want to go zero running back all the time. I I don't think you need to do that this year. No. Got fishbowl. I'll give you a little, um, this was the first, I don't know if you can see, is my screen showing right now? Are you able to see it this is, mock? See it. Yep. So uh, this was the, this was the first mock. This started as, like probably an hour after he released um, the scoring settings. And I'm in here with a few guys. Um and this was really the, everyone's first crack at it. Um, and there's there's some inconsistency for sure. I did not – the tight ends didn't fly off the board in that second round, maybe early third, quite like they thought they would. Um, there's so much uncertainty at the position. That's probably <laughs> why, right? Yeah, like extremely. Who went third at tight end? Uh, Hawk. Hawkinson by a mile. By almost a full, almost a full round, yeah. Um, 
He's uh, he, he's cruising through. And I mean, the quarterbacks didn't exactly fly off like I thought, but I mean, that's what we do, right? We zig when there's zags to, or we zag when there's zigs to be had. So um, that's what I try to do. I'm trying to get a feel for how comfortable I am punting on quarterback until the four or five turn. We'll see what I get coming along here. And obviously this is just a mock. We're just having fun. But, you know, it does a Jared Goff and uh, who we got and an Anthony Richardson suffice me. If there's no turnovers, maybe if, if I'm not penalized for that, you but also penalized you know. for turnovers, <laughs> Goff will probably be good in the system this year. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I like so that's that. um that's a little preview. And, um, you know, those will obviously get fine tuned as we get closer and closer. Are you doing any uh, w- which division are you in? Um, Boston Live. Nice. Uh, yeah, I did it last year. It was fun. I um, got to meet some people uh, that in person that I, I hadn't prior. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, that that helps strike up some serious friendships with some guys. Absolutely. Yeah, the face to face is um, in this industry, too, which is wild. I mean, not that I think not that I was concerned it wouldn't. But, you know, meeting people, they just want to talk just like they did on the Internet. Like I, they just want to talk about Judy or Sutton. You know, like, I, and that's where it all, it makes for just like, and that's what I do with my best friends in real life anyway. So it's great. Yeah. It's funny how the, the people you like from the community, you like them just as much in person as you, mm-hmm. do, you know, um, yeah. on the internet. It is pretty funny. I, I went out with uh, some guys for lunch, not all that long ago, a couple of months ago um, from the community. And the only one I really interacted with heavily was, um, this just this one guy leo mm-hmm. and and you know he organized it so it was a bunch of people he was really friendly with and it was like yeah. hanging out with people i've known for a long time which is just amazing right that's then you know what that that's awesome that really is and i wonder how much of that is because whether we've been in a league with somebody or not we've all been involved in the same process year to year for god knows how long so it's almost like I know what struggles you've been through, even if I just met you. <laughs> Some of that, yeah. And mm-hmm. and just, I mean, we talked mostly about, like, bringing up kids and work. And oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Not even fantasy football for the most part. And it, yeah. was, it was just a good time with uh, guys who are really good guys. Like, really, really yeah. good. Yeah, as a, as a guy in my 30s who, you know, I'm from Florida originally, and I live in Kentucky now. And, you know, m- making new friends is not – the easiest thing in the world, even if you're a social person, this is like my jam. I'm meeting people, making friendships, building relationships on here. It's just like, it's, I needed it so badly. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. You moved there all alone. Uh, yeah. My, uh, my wife got a job at the UK children's hospital here and I moved here for work. So it was kind of the perfect storm. And, you know, we did like all the standard stuff, like joining kickball teams and bar trivia and whatnot, <laughs> but, um, Nothing beats nothing beats the fantasy so far. I'll, I'll tell you that much. That's so um, I I appreciate that. Um, so we talked about you know we made the shaggy tweet joke a couple times and that just made me curious. So in your mind, what qualifies as like I'm going to tweet this out? Do you have like I don't want to say a process because I know it's not that complicated, but w- w- walk me through like yeah I'm going to tweet this. Uh, sometimes I do it just because I feel like it and there's hmm. nothing no other reason beyond that. Um, sometimes I will purposely tweet something to be funny and, and, and sometimes, uh, cause you know, m- my, uh, my persona is pretty level headed and positive, which is really how I am mostly in real life, but mm-hmm. I, I'm actually fairly funny. Um, and I'll throw stuff out there, just throw the pants down the hall, you know, every once in a while and it <laughs> talks the living daylights out of some people who have never seen me do it or haven't met me in person and and don't know what to expect and uh you know that's fun for me too watching the reactions from people who sometimes i can't believe you tweeted that <laughs> yeah well i did <laughs> you know there's uh, a thir- there's a certain thrill that comes with that yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, so with fantasy stuff i usually try to do stuff that i think is going to help someone that i uncovered mm. And like now that we hit draft season, I'll start mm-hmm. tweeting more. Um, I take a break after uh, the last week of writing articles and recording podcasts. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really do a lot of dynasty. Um, I don't want to be a dynasty writer either, right? Because mm-hmm. I need the break. 
I know Dynasty. Yeah. Well, no, that's the best part. <laughs> you know that's the best part for me. I need the break. I don't want to. Yeah. Um, but I think about is it going to help somebody? Uh, sure. You know, with Shaggy, you know, <laughs> I just think it's nice. something fun. And, and so many yeah. times I just throw something like that out there and people will, will, oh, man, now I can't stop thinking about that song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to do something Wednesday nights during the season. I'll bring back yeah. this year, where I, I nice. ask you to give me a player and I will send you a gif of what I think of him mm. for this coming week. So your um, gift game is strong. My gift game has become strong. I didn't have one until I uh, got active in Twitter. Oh, it's all about the reps. Yeah, it's all about getting it's the reps. It's all about in. the reps. Yeah. <laughs> but I find most of the questions pe- the players people ask about are players. I'm like, that guy's gonna suck. Why are you even asking me? So there's all these horrible gifts of like people growing <laughs> up and things. And they're like, I can't believe you think he's gonna be bad, dude. He's no matchups bad. Everything's bad. Yeah. 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 But yeah. That's a good way to do it. I use my um, like my group chats with my friends as like my farm leagues to funnel gifts up to Twitter to the big leagues. Uh, <laughs> kind of pick pick and choose the best prospects and then and then go from there. Um, you're oh. definitely right. You said you said a great thing about the the dynasty. And I, this is really my first year getting into the dynasty, and I didn't have that break that I feel like I needed. Um, my batteries are. I, I need to be charged on the reg. It, it's a lot. It's, it's fun, but it's a lot. Yeah. Like I, I outright tweet out there sometimes how much I hate Dynasty. I play one, <laughs> and I just I like don't that. feel like leaving it because it's the first one I was ever invited to. But mm-hmm. I'm like, I already say, yeah, I hate this. And people are like, yeah. oh, I love it. No, no, dude, I don't want to be fielding trade requests. <laughs> like, I just don't want to. Yeah, yeah, you would be proud of me. I traded away every pick I have until 2026, so I don't have to do any research <laughs> or, or drags or no slow drafts, no nothing like that. I'm out. So you built a contender? I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am all I am all in for two or three. I'm the only guy in the leagues trading for Derrick Henry. I'll say that much. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm the guy in the league who looks at my team and I'm like, I've got some big names. I've got some no names. I have built the perennial team that's just here to sell tickets. <laughs> the show. You're the attraction. I get yeah, you're the common attraction. Uh, my like team. It. Are you a contender? Almost. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> are you gonna say, be bottom of the barrel? No, I won't be bottom of the barrel. Well, so don't you, you want to do one or the other? I don't care enough to do one or the other. <laughs> I'm here to make Profit yeah. for my franchise. We're selling yeah, tickets, right. baby. You that's are the Jer- the Jerry Jones of Dynasty. I get it. You, I completely understand now. It makes complete that, sense. That would that makes sense. Yes. That's yeah, that tracks. I mean. All right. So let's get to a guy who's creeping up on Jerry Jones in age. Mister Aaron Rodgers. Does he still have it? All right. I have a couple of questions for you with this one. All right. Sure. Do you know how many games he threw for over three hundred yards last season? My guess would be none, based upon the question. Yeah, I've tweeted this out a million times. Zero. That's correct. Yes. Zero. Do you know how many games he threw for three touchdowns or more? I want the answer to be zero, and I'm going to guess I'm wrong, so I'm going to say one. You're, you're wrong. It's one. That's right. Yes. You're right. Yes. One. <laughs> one game where he threw for three hundred three touchdowns. Mm. Never threw for more than that. Just one. He, he threw for 290 yards once. He was the king of mediocrity last mm. year. He had a bunch of games with one or two touchdowns or no touchdowns, a bunch of games with like 220 yards. Mm-hmm. He wasn't good. He was completely average. Um, he was so average that when they, they played, um, was it the Lions? I think everybody was throwing multiple touchdowns against yeah. I think it was the Lions. Yeah. They played the Lions, and everybody's saying, oh, my God, you're going to play Aaron Rodgers. And I was like, oh, no, good God, do not play him even. In <laughs> no, no. What are you doing? And he crapped the bet against them, and I think he had no touchdowns, right? He's a QB2 at best in fantasy this year. I'm completely out. I want nothing to do with him. If he's better mm. than that and people want to come back and tell me I told you so, have at it. He's yours. I don't want to play this game with Aaron Rodgers. I'm out. Yeah, so I'm I, I'm with you on – I don't think there's a scenario that repeats itself where it was 2019 he was written off, 2020 he wins the MVP. I think best-case scenario – if you're missing out on Aaron Rodgers, you're missing out on a, a back end QB one finish, and that's probably being conservative. Uh, I mean, just looking at his last year, I mean, you hammered home a bunch of good points about his performance. He only had one week, one inside the top seven 
And yeah. that was his only – and that week was his only week inside the top 12. I mean, that is – that's really bad. Well, and people will throw out there, well, he didn't have any weapons. Well, then why did he ask the Jets to sign all his wide receivers? <laughs> I that mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's – it's he's – the year, the year he was the MVP, he had a coach he bullied, and he essentially mm-hmm. was throwing on the one yard line, and he threw all those touchdowns that season. Yeah, I know because I had Aaron Rodgers on. I mean, Aaron, mm. um, Aaron Jones on a team. And oh crying. yeah, so I'm you're crying. ultra. No, I was nobody crying knows all the time. <laughs> nobody knows a quarterback's performance more than a, than somebody who has that quarterback's running back. Nobody. I was so sad. I was like, yeah, they're on the one yard line. Here comes a. Oh my God, he's throwing again! Oh Jesus, mm. what's he doing? I also had Tanyan, so I wasn't that upset. But, but, but some, in some way, yeah, yeah. He threw all those touchdowns on like inside the five yard line, and yeah, if he can do that again, yeah, you'll get a, a QB one finish out of him. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think yeah. best scenario for the Jets is real football. He transforms into um, Peyton Manning of Denver. And he manages the game with all the weapons he has. And he's just still average like he was last year. But they win football games. Yeah. So bringing the team baseline up, but um, not quite necessarily, you know, lighting up the scoreboard. And, you know, people talk about, you know, Tom Brady's move to the Bucks, which was, you know, up and down. But, you know, it was great. But the, the thing that I see a lot of people do is they compare the Stafford move with Cup to this kind of – Stafford had a good year. He was still, I think, want to say QB 11 in points per game. He was an MVP of the league. You know, he was just a Super Bowl winner at the very end of the day and played well. So that's, that's, the yeah, it's that. not a fair comparison. And, no. and, and the age is a lot different, skewed, significantly right. skewed. And, yeah. and when quarterbacks get old, and I know ta- people be like, well, it didn't happen to Brady. Brady's an anomaly, he's not the norm. Mm-hmm. Watch quarterbacks get old, and when they start getting old, avoid them. Why? Because they go from throwing like 60 yards in the year to not being able to be accurate on a 15 yard pass. Like their arms just all mm-hmm. of a sudden fall off. Yeah, totally out. Anybody you who wants them in yeah. leagues, I'm in. If, if you're drafting <laughs> after me and you're like, oh, yeah. I hope he makes it to me, he will. I won't draft him. Yeah, you can't be high on Christian Watson and expect a lot from Aaron Jones this year and say that Aaron Rodgers had no weapons last year. He it, just talking out of both sides of your mouth, really. Yeah. And he had AJ Dillon. I mean, he had yeah. I thought he had decent weapons. He just yeah. was bad. I watched yeah. games and he didn't look good when I watched mm-hmm. the games either. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, he had less QB one finishes than Bailey Zappi. How about that? Oh man. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. All right. Um, so you, I actually edited a question here because you mentioned earlier that you were a bartender. So I want to flip this question to you. As a bartender, what's the worst drink someone can order when the bar is crowded? Oh God. Um, say so. Uh, my experience with this was mm-hmm. I worked at a very busy, busy place, sure. and this guy from somewhere in the Caribbean, I could tell by his accent, wanted a hurricane. Now, I want you to understand. I wouldn't uh, guess that a guy from the Caribbean would come. That would be like someone from New Orleans going to North Dakota and ordering Cajun. Like what? All right. So (laughs) here I am working a bar in this big nightclub with like, you know, five people deep at the bar. And the girl I'm working the bar with comes over to me and says, do you know how to make a hurricane? And I went, who the hell's ordering a hurricane? We're in Boston. (laughs) We live in Boston. People don't drink hurricanes here. Mm-hmm. It, the guy was from somewhere in the Caribbean, and yeah. he wanted a hurricane. So she opened up a book and made him one. Of course, this is slowing down everything. Mm-hmm. So of they, course. If you go to a busy bar and you want something crazy that you know not a lot of, like, you know if you're ordering a drink that's not common, right? Just don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's my advice. Don't Don't do be it. that person. Yeah, don't Just be that person. Take a take a take a beat and think about is this really the right decision right now? Yeah, because I I mean we hit a point where I was like throw three different kinds of rum in a glass with uh, cranberry juice and some grenadine to make it really red. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. You get back in line and tell me the difference after this. Make yeah, it yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah. He'll be happy. Make it strong. <laughs> That's a great point. Make it strong and people will feel like they got their money's worth, especially if the bar is crowded. Come on, folks. Yeah. 
play along. All right. So you asked me when I showed you that live draft, which was the third tight end to go, which brings us to our next question. After the big two, who is your tight end three for the time being? So it's funny you ask this, both this and Aaron Rodgers, because I just mm. tweeted out polls this week on both of them. Mm-hmm. And on this one, I asked, all right, so who's your, your third tight end, right? Mm-hmm. In the poll, I had Waller, Hawkinson, uh, um, Kittle. somebody else, right? Uh, yeah. And, and for me, it, it goes Kelsey, obviously, at one. Uh, Andrews is the second one, right? As, mm-hmm. And that's what your question was. I think Hawkinson's the third one. Everybody's mm-hmm. really high on Waller right now because of his move to New York City. Um, he's been really dinged up a lot the past couple of years. Um, Certainly. I would kind of fade him a little bit down the line there, and I'd probably mm-hmm. put uh, Freermuth up above Waller as well, mm-hmm. Hawkinson. Uh, he had 98 targets last year, and and I think you're going to see that again this year, right? Like we're talking about a tight end is going to get probably – between 90 and 100 targets, uh, mm. I would like to go with either one of those two after Kelsey and Andrews. Um, Hawkinson's my clear three. Yeah. So when um, so you view him as your clear three, do you view him as somebody that fits right into your mold of I need an elite tight end or is this – the board is falling the way that I like it. This is a nice value. I'm going to hop on board. <laughs> There's only one elite tight end in the league right now, mm-hmm. and that's Travis Kelsey, in my opinion. Sure. Um, Andrews is really good, and I love Andrews. Um, mm-hmm. but he's going to be up and down. Yeah. Waller's he, – he could be great this year. He might not be. I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I would have that uh, Hawkinson in this uh, third tier. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. <coughs> excuse me as at the top of it sure so, so you um and you're, top five probably yeah, for sure, sure. yeah I would say. so you, you're not interested in playing the will he won't he kittle game uh i don't think he will so hmm. I, I will say he won't he blocks nice. a lot the team is really well-rounded and, hmm. and is is kittle a better tight end than some of the guys we're naming oh yeah he is mm-hmm. He's a better all-around tight end, better real football yeah. player. That doesn't mean he's going to help you that much in fantasy, right? Like yeah. he could, but they have a lot of weapons there. They, mm-hmm. They're and if if the offense continues on the path that it's been on, no matter who's playing QB, because I don't think we know who that is yet. They yeah. spread the ball around. They're not going to funnel it to one guy. They're going to extremely. Keep And that's a big thing. I think there's a misconception that Kittle is arguably even the alpha there when in reality, when all four of the big guys are on the field together, I say big guys, all four of the superstars are on the field together. He's actually last in the pecking order. Uh, And I mean, you're talking about, you know, he's come a long way from being the only viable threat on the team to, you know, what they have now, you know, when he was doing his big chunk damage, it was not when they had a healthy Debo, a healthy, a a, a come along, a Uke, and the best running back in the league. Yeah, times of times they have a changed. Yeah, it, it's there's just he is clearly the fourth option. There. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, will he have big games? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but is he somebody you want to rely on every single week? Probably not. No. All right. So that'll bring us to our next question here. Tailgating a live event. Underrated, overrated, or properly rated? Um probably underrated depending on who you're Mm. with right so if you're doing it right and you have really good food and yeah company it's it's a great time Mm -hmm. uh i would say when when i was young i had people who overrated it because some of them didn't make it into the games (laughs) they preferred the tailgating aspect i know how that goes i do i i can sympathize with that to an extent if the tailgate is so great that you don't want to leave um, but if you're only staying because the alcohol and the porta potties are both right there, that's a different story. <laughs> yeah, that's why they were staying. Uh, <laughs> it's it, I, I would say it's it's underrated. It it should be a really good time. I mean, if you're not mm-hmm. doing it right, that's on you. Get yeah. better at it. Yeah, you remember why you're here, folks. Remember yeah. why you're here. Yeah, yeah. I don't moment. I don't get a tailgate as much as I used to, but probably because we don't really have a live. You know, we don't have any pro sports in Kentucky and. I'm not going to suddenly become a UK fan. That ain't happening. So, um, 
Well, I, I don't go to a lot of Patriots games because it's an all day event and sure. I just get like, Oh my God, I have to leave in the morning. And yeah. Go you got a whole day. Night. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, I go to a lot of Celtics games, and you're not tailgating at Celtics. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I, I guess I haven't thought. I don't. You don't hear about basketball tailgates being the yeah. uh, quite the quite the. So what? What's the vibe at Patriots tailgates though? Let's say hypothetically you were going to. Is it just as fun as most stadiums? Oh yeah, hmm. definitely. Um, I, I have friends who have season tickets, and they're there all the time, and they are uh, definitely enjoying their tailgate. Yeah. Like they mm -hmm. meet up with a bunch of other people we grew up with, and they're all tailgating in the same parking lot mm. spots every week you know and they yeah. know all the people tailgating around them so. yeah yeah a little community yeah yeah, sure. yeah. it's yeah. like they have a campground or something right <laughs> yeah, yeah it's 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 like their church i it's I, I completely get it all right well that'll bring us to my favorite segment that i do every show this is our memory lane segment and this is where i go into your twitter and i type in a couple keywords and i go back as far as i can and i find uh, i find a fun tweet and we have a conversation about it all right. This so be interesting. Um, on January 6, 2021, you tweeted, I wish I was there storming the Capitol with. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, this tweet, this tweet was on January 6, 2021, but you actually, yours, it was not that. I promise everybody. You said, The other day I was frustrated. So I yelled out, F my life. And the neighbor heard, F my wife. Uh, it got. It got five likes. Um, and so I guess my follow-up is, how's your relationship with the neighbor going? And is everything good? <laughs> Everything's good. Everything's mm -hmm. good. I just think that uh, only five <laughs> likes is not, not worthy of a good tweet, obviously. <laughs> oh, I thought it deserved significantly more because for all the jokes and puns that we all make regarding these phrases, that I hadn't heard that one before. So um, I'm I'm gonna actually gonna have to go back and give it six. Make sure it's six likes. <laughs> yeah, you know sometimes dad jokes work really well, right? Other than dad jokes. <laughs> Don't work well, really well. So, no, it's all about you know. I, I appreciate taking a dad joke and throttling it up, which is um, which is actually what happened. And you know what, Mike, I have to apologize on this one. You actually had twenty likes on that one. You had five comments, so I got the stats wrong. <laughs> so oh, I feel a little better now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the problem was when the neighbor was knocking on the door. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... Oh, that good old New England hospitality. It never goes away, does it? Oh, that's good stuff. Memory lane's fun around here. I always appreciate um, appreciate seeing what people got. I've had some where I've gone back to 2012. Um, wow. there, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's crazy. All right, so we'll move past that one. That was that was hilarious. Appreciate that. Um, have you ever been fired or fired someone? Um, I have never been fired, but yes, I've mm. fired people. Mm. Do you have a process? Oh, yeah. Hmm. It's uh, talk to people, right? Mm -hmm. Explain to them what the situation is. Talk sure. to them again. Document <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a big fan of having a big spreadsheet where you document every event that you're... Mm. Um, Timeline. Yeah. You know, everything they either didn't do or did do or yeah. all of it with dates and times and whatnot and going through it with them. And mm -hmm. yes, when I'm... Uh, I have fired people. I can tell you most people I've done this process with in my life mm -hmm. usually straighten out because I don't know, mm. you know, I don't know what's going through some people's heads, but yeah. I think they think they can do whatever they want. And then you're like, mm -hmm. look, you're going to make me fire you. Oh, what, wow. You're going to make me fire you. That's because mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not like I just don't like you. Yeah. Right. You're going to make me fire you. And here's why, because you keep doing mm -hmm. these things and you're not doing the things you're supposed to do. Sure. And, when you spell it out, like, uh, I can remember one guy got really mad at me at first. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was working for a company called Granger Industrial Supply. It was literally the first time I had to put somebody through the process. Mm -hmm. I did not fire him, by the way. The process. I, I like it. I it's said, got such a ring to it. You're going to make me fire you mm -hmm. because you can't come back to lunch or show up on time. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go wow. to break, you're late yeah. coming back. In the morning, mm -hmm. you're late every day. Like, I'm going to end up having to fire you over this. Mm -hmm. And at first he was mad. I was like, wait, whoa, why are you mad at me? Uh, <laughs> am I blocking the door so you can't get in here? Yeah. And he was like, 
no, I guess it's my fault. Dude, it's no one's fault but yours. Like, some people, I think, ne- never had anybody hold them accountable. And, and you know, when you talk to them about it and you start setting the expectations that – and and like I said, I'm, I'm the old guy, so I've managed a lot of people younger than me. And yeah. sometimes never people just never set – true expectations with them that they had to meet and once you start doing that usually you don't have to fire people so they they just toe the line that's why i go through that like i said the process Mm -hmm. it's because i i typically like i don't want to fire somebody i don't want to go through the process i don't want to do that yeah who wants to do that and i let them know i don't want to do it right like you're making me do stuff i don't like why yeah No, that's a, that's a big part of, you know, the maturation process. And some people are able to do it quickly and understand their role and how it's impacting others. And other people are, have blinders onto that. And I think that's where the divide comes, you know, how, how, how willing are you to open up and look at the situation from a bird's eye and your role in it versus, you know, just like you said, doing whatever the hell you want. Doing whatever the hell you want. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's people who are a little bit older than you that have worked for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you're part of the same, you, you're probably part of the same generation they are, but probably didn't have the same kind of upbringing they did where mm-hmm. everything their parents was reading was telling them to be positive, never hit them with uh, anything negative. And I have had employees tell me, nobody ever told me I was doing a bad job before. And I'm like, you're, you're <laughs> What is your home? You're you're 30 years old and no one ever told you you did bad at something before. There's Mm. no way everything you did in your whole life was good. Right? Mm -mm. Like, there's no way. And, you know, sometimes they need to hear that. It's crushing, though, when you see somebody that everybody, yeah, they're wonderful. It's like you feel bad. Like, I walk away, like, oh my God, I just, you're doing them a service, though, because it's mean, like, what I always wonder about that, which is crazy to me, is I can understand how a parent can be oblivious and can do that. I can understand how a coach could do that, you know, like they're all working in unison to not break anybody's spirits or even, I don't know, obviously that's terrible. It was different when I was a kid getting coached. Oh my God. What I don't, what I don't understand is, do you not have access to the internet? Cause nobody's kept me in check more than the internet has not my parents. And I mean like keeping it real. Um, so I just don't, maybe they're able to box themselves in and never hear criticism, but man, do you need criticism to grow as an individual? It's vital. Uh, those people really get punched in the nose hard when they try to become a fantasy. <laughs> network, if you didn't notice, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. be right all the time. And when no, somebody's no, no. telling them they're wrong, Oh my goodness. It's, it's, I try not to laugh hard when I see it on Twitter, to be honest. And it's like, uh, yeah. why is everybody giving me a hard time? Dude, you were like arguing with people relentlessly about this. <laughs> 100% knew you were right. Yeah. You're wrong. Just walk they, away. It's okay. They love the passive aggressive defense. Like apparently I upset some people. Sorry for speaking the truth. I was like, okay, yeah, you need to go. Away for <laughs> <it>. <laughs> it's it's rinse repeat you know it's like how many times do we all have to see the story and it's like you're watching people what did you just talk about right you just talked about like people coming like almost like a come to jesus moment with their personal responsibility and we're just going to continue to watch these people come to jesus with their awareness or lack of lack of it i guess i don't know Uh, i would say lack of general awareness of themselves there's lots entirely yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. go to the supermarket and some lady blocking the aisle sideways Mm. reaching over here going that way yeah oh was i blocking the aisle oh no not at all (laughs) (laughs) yeah not yeah not a lot of reading of the rooms going on out there right now but you know what i guess that's just how some people live their lives oh goodness speaking of how some people live their lives how do you live your life at the end of a draft? Let's get some later round talk going in. So let's talk maybe rounds 11, 12, or even later. Doesn't matter. It can be no, as I'm late as you want. I'm going to do a shameless plug here. You may Love or it. may not have ever read my article, mm. The Adaptive Draft Strategy. Um, mm. it's, it's out there. I'll, I'm going to revamp it, I think, this year and Please. throw it up here again. Um, you, you talked about it, which means I, I bet you'll read and be like, these are all the things I do. Cause you talked about adapting during drafts mm-hmm. where, you know, other people are like come in with this hard strategy and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go zero running back and draft a bunch of wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Good luck winning the league doing that. Right? Like, <laughs> I, good luck. 
Um, Got some adaptive so, stretch strategy right here. Yeah, that's it right there. So, nice. you know, um, adapt or die. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I quote um, some unusual spots in my intro there as well, where mm -hmm. people wouldn't think about this stuff with fantasy, but it holds mm -hmm. true. So mm -hmm. I, I usually let the draft come to me as I'm going. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's guys I want, right? And I'll reach sure. the people I want. But as we get to later rounds, I like to try to draft players that um, have a high upside there, right? Because mm -hmm. if you hit on them, you're, you're going to win a championship. And if you yeah. miss on them, you know, it's 11th round. Yeah. If, if, even if I didn't miss, if he was 11th round worthy, what's that, four fantasy points a week? I'm probably cutting this mm -hmm. guy for a waiver ad if he doesn't pan out anyways. But Absolutely. Like uh, the year Lamar Jackson um, broke out, he was my last pick on almost every wow. single team. And uh, one of my friends said to me at the end of the season, I am so jealous of you right now. You dominated both leagues were in by picking Lamar Jackson with the last pick in your draft. Mm. And I was like, dude, it's – that's that's the game though right because you, you 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 hit it from the very beginning of that of that um, little soliloquy you just had guys who have high upside, upside not guys that will start six to seven games if somebody misses injury guys that can take over yes so it, it's um jeff bell had a tweet the other day where he said something about you know um hitting on the Drafting the outliers is how you win championships. And mm. my response was, no, drafting the right outliers is how you win. <laughs> if you draft the wrong outliers, it's how you mm. lose, right? Yeah. Because they'll all suck. Mm. Which ones are the right ones? I don't know. We None of us know yet, right? We can That's think we know. But but it, it's um, – with him, He I knew he was going to be the starting quarterback there. I knew he ran, ran with the football. People didn't want to draft him because they thought he couldn't throw. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get this guy last pick in this draft. <laughs> and then I was you like. See, your heart starts to, you know, beat like, a little faster. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, then I was like, he's going to be my last pick in every draft. And people are going to make fun of me because I'm going to take a kicker earlier than I ever would just so I yeah. can pick him last. Mm -hmm. um, but finding guys like that, I mean, you know, late uh, mm -hmm. in, in the mid rounds, it's. I get a little bit like I start very risk averse and I get more risk, like uh, take riskier players as the draft goes again, yeah. looking for upside. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you can find a guy with high upside at any position late in a draft, it's going to be really beneficial. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, last year I tried that by scatter shooting tight ends when I didn't mm -hmm. get uh, a good tight end early and it, worked in a couple of leagues and epically failed in a couple of <laughs> but that that's the beauty of it right is you know those late rounds the first several rounds are maybe a little bit more strategy dependent and then once you get later you're looking at 12 teams depending on your league size and it's 12 different people's idea of how a player will perform and it's a great gauge for where your league mates are at and what their hopes are because you know see people start to take you know two defenses they start to take, you know, an awful wide receiver too, only because he's going to get starts. Like it's just a, it, if, it's a no man's land. If 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 you take two two defenses, we can't be friends. That's all I can say. We, yeah, we that's a wrap. Friends, if you take two kickers, we will not be mm -hmm. friends. I will probably say, "What are you doing?" Even <laughs> if I'm in the same league where I'm happy about it, I'll be like, oh, "Yeah, God, what are you doing?" Yeah, you're you're happy for a split second, and then you're sad. Uh, because you're happy because it's one less team to worry about, and you're sad because you have to do some friendship reevaluation, which can be yeah. tough in these modern times. Uh, I will throw out there a piece of strategy that I can say it now because everybody who plays in leagues with me more than like two mm -hmm. years know I do this. If you waive the best defense in fantasy, I will add it as soon as I can on on waivers mm -hmm. and keep them on my team. And if I have the top two defenses in fantasy and they're like the only two good ones, I'll just hold the other one hostage. Yeah as an mm. advantage throughout the end of the year. Um, I, I know I know guys now that realize I do this, that I play against, who will drop like a running back that's worthy of keeping just mm. so I can't pick up that start. Ah, gosh. So 
You're bull. I, I haven't heard of bully defense before. You'd said I've heard of bully tight end. I haven't heard bully DST. That's pretty powerful. I do it with the best kicker in the league too, because everybody says yeah. they're unpredictable. But every year there's one kicker that's better than everybody else, and we usually know who that is by like week five. Yeah, there's like running backs. These guys have you know the upper upper guys are pretty evident immediately. Sands, you know, you know, something crazy happening. But you're right for the most part. Those two top two or three guys are weekly performers. Yeah, and 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 it's a different defense and a different kicker every year, so I can't yeah. tell you what's going to be this year. Sure, but I try to grab those guys off waivers and then mm-hmm. hold. You know, when you get them in your starting lineup, it's a mm-hmm. big advantage in mm-hmm. uh, you know regular home leagues. Yeah, but of course. every once in a while, I run into that guy who clearly doesn't read many fantasy articles, and he'll mm-hmm. have like two draft, two kickers, and two defenses, and you'll be like, yeah. Oh, Oh my God, this guy's going to hold them the whole season. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you just have to look at his lineup every week and go, he's still doing it, isn't he? Yeah, his redraft team is my dynasty team. You know, I'm going to be winning <laughs> all year. Congratulations. Uh, he, he, I, that's, you know what? It's some people just want to be on the field, don't they? That's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> like all that right, that'll bring, that'll bring us to trivia corner here. Um, I got a little trivia question here for you. Who was the last tight end one not named Kelsey or Gronkowski? Ooh. Oh, wow. I'm not cheating, by the way. So I'm not. I'm not no, I think you're good. <laughs> I, 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 I looked up so, so I don't cheat. Oh, crap. You'd have to do some extensive. Um, I had to pull this one. It wasn't quite as easy as I had hoped it would be to find this, this information. Hernandez wasn't the top tight end in scoring, mm-hmm. right? No, no, that's a good guess. Oh my God, I don't know. Oh, Mr. Jimbo Graham of the New Orleans Saints, Jimmy Graham. Oh my goodness, we're going back. Yes, 20, 2013. Wow. Yes. Yeah. He um, had quite the year too. Yeah. I just thought in between him and them there would be someone else. Wow. That I was did too. Great, huh? I was expect I was expecting maybe like an Ertz or some I don't know. I knew Kittle never well, had, had a Kelsey, really good but, year, but I know he finished yeah. second, not first. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, wow. Yeah, there's uh looking back at some of those older some of those older finishes, man, it's um it, it's a blast just to see how far the position has come. And that year he had 143 targets, 1,200 yards, and 16 touchdowns. He was on it. Wow. Yeah, really good. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I probably had him on many teams that year. He was one of the guys I like to draft a lot. Hmm. Yeah, uh, we, uh, we we could always use more of him. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we could. Yeah. All right. We've got one more question here to round things out. Does a Josh Jacobs exist in 2024 like he did last year? Um, and this is probably – I could have phrased this question a little bit better. Is there a Josh Jacobs on the board? Like a middle-of-the-round draft pick who ends up being a, a running back two? Yes, a world beater. Um, well, he was running back two really most of the year, right? Like mm. top two, minutes, yeah, something like that. Uh, I, I wished I had drafted him, by the way. I, mm-hmm. I kicked myself by the way for not mm-hmm. everything <laughs> a, in lot, me a lot of people did oh you know he last year was one of the years i did things i never do i listened to other people's fantasy advice and i didn't draft him when i mm. thought i should sure uh i like guys this year that i would say uh are in a similar spot mm. uh david montgomery is for sure I think excellent adp will be about mid rounds right yeah um, and he's he's always produces and he's going to be the goal line here where they like mm. to pound the ball and with their big back uh, for the Lions. Cam mm. Akers, he was great all through December and January last year. Mm. I mean, people will be like, oh, that's a risky pick because of blah, blah, blah. It, you're going to get him in the later mid rounds probably. Yeah. And the guy was great for the last two months of the season last year. I would expect him to produce as well. Um, mm. And then I'll, I'll just throw out this guy because I love him. But there's a lot of dependencies, and he's probably going to be a little bit later as uh, Sam J. P. P. Ryan. Ooh, uh, if, 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 if he, a little Denver action. If he gets a start in Denver, he, he will produce. Every mm. time he was starting for Cincy, he produced. Yes. He can catch the ball. He can run with the ball. Mm. Uh, he's a lot better than I think uh, – 
he gets credit for being, but and I mean, you know, he was Joe Mixon's really good, and he was stuck behind mm-hmm. Joe Mixon. So yeah, he um, he actually had more RB one finishes than Joe Mixon did last year, despite only starting three games, which is pretty so, wild. <laughs> not surprised by that because I'm yeah. a hashtag Never Mixon guy, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I used to take a lot of heat for that on Twitter from the guys who love Mixon, mm-hmm. and I always tried to sell it and explain it to them the same way. Joe Mixon is not a top three running back. You mm-hmm. guys keep talking about him like he's a top three running back. He's not. He's a running yeah. back two. Yeah. He's not even he, top ten. He's a running back two. He's the definition of why a running back situation is the most important thing um, in their arsenal. Um, it, it's just it's just textbook because, like you said it yourself, there's it's not he's either good or bad. It's that, is he acceptable? Can he do what's required of him given all of the other extenuating circumstances? And yeah. Well, and, you know, let's face it, his draft capital for Mixon's really high. Mm -hmm. He had that one good season and he did. He had one top 10 season. He was very good. He's probably top five Mm -hmm. finished that year. Mm -hmm. And and I ate crow for saying never Mixon. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you guys finally got your one good season. How many years did you wait for that? Let's see if (laughs) he does it again. And they waited happened. five. They waited five seasons. They waited five seasons. That's which right. is unusual for a running, for a back, running back to finish as. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, that was the dynasty guys, right? I'm yeah. talking redraft. They're talking dynasty, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm. And I still don't think he will live up to his ADP, right? And mm. I mean, on my DFS podcast, the cheat um, cheat sheet, uh, I actually was lobbying for P Ryan to stay starting because he was so awesome. He was killing it. He was killing it. He was so awesome. Mm -hmm. And and I couldn't believe they flipped back to Mixon after that because Mixon Mm -hmm. wasn't close to as good. Yeah, it was um, it was like a um, a similar feel of Zeke Pollard. Um, Not a exact apples to apples, but it had a similar feel to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pollard was. uh, you know, is it, is it more snap in this game? You know, it's just Mm. more better vibes. Yeah. All the way around. (laughs) Right. The team looks better when he's playing for fantasy. Mm. It's better when you get that double whammy there, right? Like it's Mm. better for fantasy and better for the real team. I don't know how they make the change back. Um, Yeah. It's, it's that, that's one of those guys where it's been a lot of fun projecting who the Bengals are going to sign. And it's June 7th. Nobody's on the roster yet. (laughs) Uh, so, you know, they're signing someone though, because there's no yeah. way they're gonna go just mixing. It's yeah. Well, if they if they if they want to pull in a little, I mean, I'm trying to think of who's available right now that could bring another dimension to the office. You know, Kareem Hunt's <laughs> lost a step, but he definitely can do what Mixon can't in the passing game. Um, there's some there's some viability out there. They can get Zeke. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, Lenny Fournette's still out there too. Yeah. Oh, Lenny. Oh, my boy. My boy. Goodness gracious. Yeah. There's a lot of fun to be had still. You're you're a big Fournette guy, huh? I am too. I like that. I got the I got these Bucks jerseys hanging the uh, hanging around me. He's he has been very kind to me and I'm forever indebted for his uh for his playoff performance. So when I mentioned that app called Draft when when uh where, yeah. was, Lenny, where was Lenny previously was the Jags, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um when he played for the Jags, for some reason people in fantasy hated him. Yeah. So, <laughs> So I, I, one of my, my buddies, um, the guy who taught me how to play fantasy actually pointed mm-hmm. it out on draft. He said, if you're playing draft, cause I got him addicted to it, mm-hmm. just wait and draft Leonard Fournette with your last pick. Nobody will take him and he'll get you 20 points every week. And I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, he really is getting 20 points every week. <laughs> yeah. so much money that year. Um, People he, were very sour on him in Jacksonville, despite uh, consistent production. He always produces, though, when you give him the ball. I, I oh, feel yeah. Monty's the same kind of guy. But Fournette's yeah. better, but yeah, they produce when they get the ball. Yeah, I'm a big Fournette guy. Yeah, well, it's hopefully, you know, it's funky. You know, I, I'm wondering if we're going to get an avalanche of signings here because there's a lot of quality starters out there still that haven't quite the domino um, and fall all at the same time. That's yeah, how it always that's works. Right. That's because it. once one signs, that. other GMs start to panic and like, oh no. Mm-hmm. I wanted one Go. of these guys. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a fantasy draft, right? Yeah. You know, you. That's right. Yeah, it's like a fire you, sale. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you want to have fun in a fantasy draft and you're picking on the turn, 
Um, and, and it's a league you, you know you can at least compete in no matter what. Mm -hmm. you, you hit a point in the middle rounds where you do something like, um, I, I did this many times in one of my leagues where I would go top tight end, second best tight end, and I would mm. watch heads explode <laughs> in my league. So you're and, an instigator. And everybody, like the chat would start filling up, what the fuck is he doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you draft him. You didn't need that other tight end. And then everybody will draft mm. a tight end, and then it will mm. come back to me, and I'll be like, oh, mm. the players you expected me to draft, look, they're still here. I'll take them mm. now. Nice. But you can you, do that with quarterbacks too. It's it's yeah. a very you throw them off, thing yeah. to do. Yes. You throw them off the scent. And then while they're all, like you said, while they're pulling their pants up, you take advantage of everything that's going on. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that, that's going to – it is fun. That's going to lead perfectly into our closing segment here, which is I like to give every guest 30 seconds. If you could speak to every fantasy football player in the world and just impart some wisdom upon their soul, what is it that you would say? So I will start the timer here in three, two, one. Be prepared when you enter your draft. Understand the scoring settings and and don't get stuck with just one strategy. As I mentioned, the adaptive draft strategy is essentially not getting stuck in any one strategy, right? Let the draft come to you. Um, pay attention so that you know who to pull off the waiver wire. That doesn't mean just who looks like they produced last week and might produce next week. Your league mates will drop players that are worthy. Take them. Mm -hmm. Wow. You can win a draft doing those two. I mean, win a league doing those two things. I mean, you just fit a whole column into 30 seconds. That was spectacular. And it was true. And I hope people heed those words because that allows you to be the most flexible and the most prepared for this impreparable game that it is we play. Yeah. It's always yeah. changing. Every single, every single year. That's the fun part. That's what makes that's why we're all able to do this so passionately, is because it's not. You know, it's not pick up and copy paste. It is a different game every year. So I will say, Mike, that was an absolute blast. I want to give you another, um, you know, another second here. If you want to plug anything you have coming up, you know, give some shout outs, whatever it is. Um, go to the undroppables and droppables.com uh, for fantasy and betting needs. You'll find mm -hmm. just about everything you want there. Right now, I think I mentioned Josh was putting out a lot of really good best ball stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of good betting stuff out there too right now um mm -hmm. uh, the pharaoh is putting that stuff out mm -hmm. really good um you'll find me there i write heartbreakers and money uh money makers and heartbreakers god i can't even say the name of my <laughs> art, right? money makers and heartbreakers that's what i'm most well known for um untangling the wires the waiver wire article i write as well uh i i'm on a podcast called cheat sheet for dfs um big and redraft and dfs i'd rather play those every day than dynasty by the way sorry dynasty guys um, <laughs> had to get one last dynasty it, shot in yeah thanks so much for having me chuck deeply appreciate it, it was a great time man thanks for absolutely having me. yeah you're um you're, you're you shed some absolute dimes on this show today I, I loved having you on this was an absolute blast i look forward to the season good luck in your draft good luck in scott fishbowl and um you know, tag me the next time you send out an anti-dynasty tweet, and I might, uh, I might. <laughs> they, they, they'll be um, regularly as we head into redraft, right? Good, good. Let's get some. Let's get this. Let's load this train up with coal and get it on the tracks. <laughs> Linda Lyons will jump right in as well. By the way, <laughs> oh, nice. We're building yeah. a small. We're building a small army. I mean, we've it. had threads of this going on where people yes. are mad at both of us. But yeah, so uh, we'll yeah. just add you to that list. Thanks Please, the, of course. Take care. All right. Thanks, man. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, really appreciate you stopping by. I encourage everybody to go check out Mike's work. Um, head on over to the Undroppables as well. A lot of great stuff going on over that community. Um, as always, you can check me out uh, Thursday night, the TSS Dynasty Hour. Um, got a lot of great stuff coming up there. We're going to be doing some giveaways for the Fantasy Football Expo coming up in August. Um, a lot of fun stuff planned. So, you know, come troll me on Twitter um send me some nasty emails and um i'll fight back all right cheers